there's a few things that have been kind of surfacing lately and we'll see if I can remember to hit everything that is arising. I have no idea. But um, a few of the the kind of big things have been loneliness and or aloneness, loneliness, aloneness, security, silence, and really just deeper and deeper coping mechanisms. So the me, the sense of the me. And I guess where I want to start this is speaking to or trying to describe as best I can, you know, like it, at least what's been going on here lately and what I've spoken to in, you know, various other videos. So what it seems like is the sense of me is crumbling and me is conditioning, resistance patterns, all of the ways that life is avoided, life as it is, as it is unfolding, is avoided, is resisted, is pushed away, is abandoned, neglected, ignored, all the things. Because the me wants to maintain itself, wants to maintain a sense of control, a sense of security, a sense of safety, a sense of itself, you know, survival, its own survival. And when those, at least here, I guess I, I'll just speak from kind of what has been happening here, but as those functions have dropped what has been occurring, what has seemingly been occurring is that all of the ways, all of the, the ways that life has ever been resisted, all of the stories that have ever just been kind of like, you know, whether it be trauma or pain or, you know, difficult things that have seemingly happened throughout my life. They've kind of been, you know, like the me almost like locks them away in this little box and just kind of pushes them down in, into this dark corner of itself. You know, all, all the ways that it doesn't have control, all the things that happen that it doesn't like, that trigger a sense of fear, trigger that, trigger that survival instinct, or all the ways that it just can't handle, you know, just life as it is because li life as it is, there, there can be this like intensity to it, you know? So, you know, at, at least what happened here is like I locked all those little things in a box and just shoved them down into this dark little corner and they would resurface in moments as, you know, triggers and coping mechanisms would come up and you know, little ways, little or gross, big ways that it would try to avoid life as it is or try to control, try to maintain a sense of safety. But those functions, that conditioning that avoids life, that avoids life as it is, that resists what's happening, have broken. And in the breaking of it, everything, every energy that has been locked away in that, that little box and pushed into the dark corner erupts. And it doesn't necessarily all happen at once or it hasn't happened at once here. It's kind of happened in stages. So there's almost like has been different layers to it. So maybe like a certain layer, a certain resistance pattern has fallen and then all of the energies that that specific resistance pattern has been suppressing surface and are actually felt fully, completely felt with no resistance. And it's been very intense. Um, 
at times, you know, feeling overwhelming, but I think the more frequently it has happened, there's like, um, the system has almost been acclimating to just feeling like directly feeling an energy, directly feeling an emotion. Because we kind of get told when we're children, either directly or indirectly, that anger is not okay. And so we create coping mechanisms and resistance patterns to resist the energy of just pure anger or pure grief or pure sadness. Or we create resistance patterns to suppress some certain aspect of, you know, what is expressing authentically as our, you know, unique true nature. And so all those resistance patterns get built up and this process is essentially a deconstruction or a crumbling of those resistance patterns. So then life becomes experienced directly. There's a an intimacy that is uncovered. A complete intimacy with every emotional experience, however pleasant or unpleasant, however difficult or easy, however um, however preferred or not preferred it is, it doesn't matter anymore. It's all, it all comes to the surface. It's all felt. There's a direct experience of it. There's a complete unity with it. And it's no longer like, um, at least the way that it feels, it, it's like there's no longer me experiencing the feeling. It's just the feeling. It's just the sensation. It's just kind of being overtaken by something. And what I've noticed is that things move through really quickly. You know, like in a matter of, within a matter of minutes, they move through really quickly when they're felt completely. And it gets, there's more ease, you know, regardless of the difficulty of an emotion or of an experience, there's more ease. But all that said, What's been arising here recently is some resistance patterns around, specifically around security, aloneness, safety, sur kind of survival stuff, you know? Um, because, you know, in as a human animal, you know, oftentimes, like, to be alone was a matter of survival, was something that threatened survival. And so there's a, there's a deep resistance to that aloneness. And there's, you know, I guess what's realized is just how deeply, how deeply ingrained that pattern of avoiding aloneness has been, you know, there's, um, and it's so, it gets so subtle, which is wild to me. You know, it's not just physically avoiding aloneness. That's a part of it, but it's like these coping mechanisms that get built up to avoid feeling like sensing into aloneness. You know, so what's been being seen here is the, even just the thought patterns, like that's part of the conditioning that is an avoidance mechanism. So, you know, even though there is like physical aloneness here lately, you know, I'm living on property in West Virginia alone and, you know, I don't have a I've lived here less than a year, so I don't have really like a, a community of people here. I don't have a standard job. I do, you know, I don't interact with, with people regularly. 
And so there's like a deep aloneness, like a f deep physical aloneness. And it's interesting how that, that has been really illuminating that even though there's a physical aloneness, there's this, this noticing of these old coping mechanisms of escaping into thought you know, escaping into a thought of either, you know, finding some future relationship or interacting with other people in some, in some capacity. And so there's this, this pattern of escaping the direct experience of aloneness through thought patterns. And that's been pretty interesting to to notice and shocking in a way to realize how prevalent it is you know and I think it, it has only become so prevalent as the physical aloneness has really blossomed because there wasn't really as strong of a sense of that when there wasn't the physical aloneness but now that there is the physical aloneness it seems like there's these old there's these like really deeply ingrained resistance patterns of the, the me that's like, Oh shit, <laughs> we gotta get it. We gotta avoid this because the really there's a, there's such a strong sense of embracing that aloneness. It, it's not just physical aloneness. It's the truth that there is no other, you know, and it's avoiding that at all costs, because if there is no other, then there is no me. So it's just watching the ways that the me maintains itself through escaping the direct experience of aloneness through thought patterns, through fantasy, you know, through imagine an imagined future, past experiences when there have been people here. It's all, all just like this, the stuff of thoughts. And that's been really strange actually to, to notice. And there's, it's like, it's almost like becoming humorous at this point. Like it's exhausting. It's completely exhausting that I'm just like, okay, this again, this again, this again. But there's just like becoming this habituation of like it comes up and like maybe there will be a moment of getting you know awareness being pulled into it and then just like there's a thought there's a thought there's another thought there's another thought this is a thought this is a thought this is a thought <laughs> and then just uh, like constantly it's like this constantly reorientation or, or reorienting towards direct experience And, um, you know, that aloneness, like there's been grief in that, you know, there's been like layers of grief. And, you know, old, I guess like ways that that resistance pattern, that pattern of resisting aloneness has caused you know, energies to physically become stuck in the body. And I know that's a paradox that there like isn't actually a body. So this is like so many words or in so many of the ways that I speak, like it, it's just this constant paradox and like every next sentence contradicts the previous sentence and on and on and on because that's just the nature of this thing, you know? That's totally just the nature of this thing. But there's as those as those more like really fundamental resistance patterns are starting to be kind of like swept aside there's like um energies arising that honestly have been really surprising or like discharges so like physical discharges and the discharges that happen here are not only, you know, like emotional expression, such as like tears or just in a moment admitting to myself, like there's anger here. There's like a deep anger here and feeling into it and, 
you know, so I can't tell you how many times during my day, even if I'm out doing something, that something will arise and I'll just have this moment of just like, okay, I need to put down whatever I'm doing. Like earlier this morning, I was washing the dishes and something arose and there was just like a, okay, turn off the water. I have soap all over my hands. I have a sponge in my hands. I have a dish in my hand that I'm washing, but just pause, you know, just hold the soapy dish, <laughs> turn the water off for a moment and just pause and feel, feel this. And that's becoming, you know, it's a frequent occurrence lately. <laughs> but there's really surprising things that are arising. Almost like, you know, what you might call... <sighs> I mean, I don't want to use terms like... Some of these terms, I don't want them to sound misleading in any way, but almost like, um, I don't know, like generational stuff, like inter, you can call it intergenerational trauma or past life stuff, you know, inter past life energies. I don't know. And, and it really, it doesn't even matter what it is, but there's been these like, really surprising and really like extreme physical discharges from the body. And it's like survival shit, like stuff that this body has been holding on to as beliefs, you know, and you could, you could make all this meaning of it. You know, I could sit and make all this meaning of it. And in the moment, it's just like, there's a story that arises or, you know, some, reason but then it moves through and the reason is gone it's let go of but you know something I guess just an example of something that arose here that I I was really surprised by this actually there's just been like in you know the the way that I process things there's just like this really deeply intuitive process the way that I have gone through this and a lot of like using the body and listening to the body and listening to sensation and moving into sensation and oftentimes that leads to a specific muscle group contracting and spasming and leading to like a discharge and so there's been like a moving into that. So there's, there's different practices that I've done, you know, TRE, somatic practices, um, stuff with like vagus nerve reset, um, Feldenkrais, all sorts of stuff. And it's almost like this interesting thing where like when I've learned these new practices, like all of them end up kind of merging together. So I've, there's almost like this very unique way that this expresses that's, like a little bit of Feldenkrais, a little bit of vagus nerve stuff, and but also just like this intuitive, natural exploration of whatever is being sensed. And those have just provided tools and new ways of exploring more deeply, which has been pretty cool. But there was a really, you know, at least like in the, in the body, there's been this, this tension that's been noticed and it's been in like very specific muscle groups. And so there's just been this exploration of, um, like repatterning of like different ways of moving. And then those have naturally led to like, you know, a spasming in, in those specific muscle groups just naturally and then discharging. But one of the stories that came up recently that I was really surprised by was actually some, just some stuff from my specific family line. You know, there's my lineage is, you know, I, I have Native American lineage and um that's been something that has 
just started, you know, in the last few years. And it's been this weird thing, I think, at first, as, as I started to kind of um, explore that more deeply, there was like a, a subtle like identity attachment, there was a new identity in that. And that has, you know, had to be let go of. So there's not even an identification as like, I am this, you know, I am Native American, I am whatever. It's just like, that's part of this lineage. And, you know, it just so happens that some of those, you know, more um, like practices and just ways of being and just int like authentic, spontaneous interests just like happen to arise here and they're very joyful and there's not really an attachment to them. It just seems to be a way that this thing expresses. But what really surprised me was that in one of my recent like really extreme, probably one of the more extreme physical discharges that I've had, there was really like a feel like deeply feeling into and almost like, you know, as I've gone through this, it's there's been different times where you know, it's, there have been some points where there was a sense of, I'm, oh, I'm processing a, an energy that's from my own storyline, the storyline of this me. And then there have been other times where there's been an energy that's been processed that was like, oh, this is from my mother's storyline, from my mother's me storyline that got passed to this me through the body. And this one recently was, you know, processing an energy that was generations ago, you know, like all the way back to that lineage getting like removed from their land and just like the, the sense of, you know, in society at the time that like that way of beingness, like the authentic beingness was not okay, that they're it wasn't safe. That way of being wasn't safe. Like to be that was threatening to survival. And just realizing that there are these patterns being carried in this body of to be authentic in the way that this is beginning to, you know, that this is authentically expressing or this is spontaneously expressing, which includes some of those practices and includes, you know, shamanism or what some people might call shamanism. I don't know. It's just like the words are strange. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't identify with any of that stuff. Like I don't identify like as a native American or as a shaman or as a anything really. So it's strange to kind of use those words, but, um, but as this thing is starting to express, there's just like those fear patterns that appear to be from generations ago that got passed down through generations and that energy it's almost like the energy just gets handed from me to me to me to me like you know from one me to another me and it gets carried in the system so it so it's been actually really cool but like that was really surprising you know, that was, that was actually really surprising. And, you know, there've been ways that it's actually been really interesting. I was listening to something recently and they were talking about how, like, we have to let go of every belief. So even the belief that, even the belief that past lives say like past lives don't exist or that hell doesn't exist was the example that they used. Like even those beliefs have to be let go. And that doesn't mean that those things do exist, but you know, we like, we hold on to all these subtle beliefs, whether we realize it or not. And so there was just like this, what I realized was that there is this like deep belief pattern here that to be authentic in that specific way, as it comes, like, as it, um, in the context of, expressing things that may be perceived as more like tribal or um 
that in the context of our current society are not understood, especially when it comes to, you know, like something like psychedelic, psychedelics or um, plants, you know, use of plants, that there is just like this fundamental sense of safety that was being threatened. And so that, that's, that was really interesting to, to kind of move through. And that was a big letting go, like really painful, um, really challenging, really physically exhausting. Um, and just in the last few days since that happened, there's been like a, like every time there's a big letting go, there's almost like a, um, how do I explain this? Like a, a new homeostasis that's reached. So it, it's almost like it takes a few days for the system to kind of acclimate to not having some sort of energy lingering or looming. I'm trying to think if... Um, so when I started this video, I, ta I was talking about loneliness and aloneness, control. Um, that's been a big one. Oh, also there's been this sense, this one's almost a little embarrassing to admit, but it's just like honest, you know, it's just what's here is that I've noticed as, my, as these videos have gotten, you know, more views, there's this like very human thing in me that's just like, ooh, I'm special. Yeah, this feels good. <laughs> and I think, you know, that points to something in, in me and I think probably in most people where there's this, that goes back to like that aloneness, you know, like wanting to avoid aloneness and like, you know, some, some part of an ego wanting to be special, some part of a me wanting to be special, but then it, it's... Like, there's such a clear seeing that, you know, when that thing emerges or arises, it's, it's just a hungry ghost. Like, it's a hungry ghost that will never be satisfied. You know, that's always just like more and 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 more. It's never satisfied. And so... There's just been like these really cool gifts, I think, even just in sharing these videos and in reading various comments and even comments that are, you know, that like challenge what's being said, like super grateful for all of that stuff because it's points of reflection of like, oh, there's, oh, there's a little pang of defensiveness arising, like, and there's an opportunity. What's that about? Like, let's sit and feel that. Let's investigate that. Or like, oh, there's this, you know, feeling of like, ooh, I want to be special. I'm going to be special arising. Like, mm, let's, like, let's sit with that. Let's investigate that. So there's all these different things that are arising through this sharing, through this medium that is cool. Like, and, I'm, and there's like a deep gratitude here for that. But they're just like, there has to be an honesty about it, you know? Because, like, there's, in truth, like, this thing, the way that this is, like, it's not better than anything else. It doesn't know more than anyone else knows. Like, if you're watching this, like, this hasn't realized anything that doesn't already reside in you like it is it is what you are nobody else can give you that and no sense of validation externally you know and I like that's been a, a pattern here my whole life is seeking validation from various sources and I think we all do that in ways but no amount of validation is ever gonna satisfy that hungry ghost and so it's just like there's just mirrors, you know, like in the aloneness here, like the physical aloneness is really making way for those mirrors to, or those reflections and those patterns to be seen really clearly. 
which is kind of cool. Like it's been hard in ways. And there's also been these resistances of just like, oh my God, what it, what is this becoming? Like this, is this even going to ever be able to relate to another human again? You know, there's like fears of that, of just like, oh my God, going to be alone forever. And even like in that, just being like, okay, <laughs> even still, even still like, okay, like all of it, because this is what's happening. And so just like these deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper layers of letting go of surrender of admitting that there is nobody here that has control that ever had control yeah i think that's it thanks for coming to my ted talk <laughs>